Hey guys, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you all for joining in. Um, it's good to see you all. Um, hey Nirmal, can I request you to start us off with a word of prayer, please? As we go ahead. Sure. Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, that we could all come together and uh, enter your presence, of oh God. Lord, as we uh, come to you, Lord, I pray, Lord, that every moment that we spend here, uh, Lord, we would learn from you and, and we would be able to uh, imply that in our lives, oh God. Uh, we thank you for this time and we pray, Lord, that your name is glorified through this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Nirmal. Uh, all right, guys, uh, I hope you've been blessed by the series we've been doing so far, a uh, series on prayer. Um, we, we covered the personal prayer, power of a personal prayer, and uh, prayer and intercession. And uh, today, uh, it's just a pure joy for me to introduce uh, Pastor Sunny Prasad, uh, who's with us, who will be sharing and teaching us uh, on the power of fasting prayer. Uh, can I just, how do I add? Can we add him as a spotlight, uh, Sushil? Wait on a second. So can you just become a co-host and then... Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Anna, you're there, no? Can you? Are you able to hear me? Yes, Roshan. I'm able okay. to hear you. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm trying to add you. As no, a pastor, you have to. You'll have to just turn on your video for us to pin your pin the video to make you as a spotlight. <clears throat> okay, come on. All right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> It's an awesome privilege to have Pastor Sunny Prasad, who is with us, uh, who's, who's going to be teaching. Uh, Pastor Sunny Prasad is, uh, is a worship and the youth coordinator for Central District of uh, South India uh, Assemblies of God. Uh, and um, while he's also that, I share a lot of memories of having a lot of biryanis and a lot of kebabs and uh, just, uh, just a lot of life, you know, uh, doing with him, learning so much. Uh, on, on God uh, overall. So, uh, Anna, this, the mic is yours, the stage is yours. Uh, oh, just, mm. yeah, go for it. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Roshan, Bishop, Archbishop, <laughs> Reverend. Yeah, and uh, such a joy to be with all of you, uh, youngsters and ABC youth. Uh, the Lord has caused us to be alive at such a moment as this. And uh, he has a terrific plan. And God is never running out of plans. And so, when he thought about you, uh, he thought about this day. He thought about what we're going to discuss. And today is going to be about a very intense topic on fasting and uh, prayer. And I pray uh, that uh, you'll be open to listen to the power of fasting and prayer in a believer's life, in a Christian life, and especially in our lives as uh, this generation. I hope I'm audible uh, and uh, uh, keep your chat box uh, active. Uh, we will do a little bit of collective learning. Uh, you know, Pentecostal preachers, as they always say, um, we have always less time. And uh, I think we are shutting down the service by 10 o'clock, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yes, Anna. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, okay. we can go a little. Uh, uh, it's fine. Okay. okay. Over time, Paula. Uh, but anyway, uh, if need be, uh, I will see how best I can cover the topic. Uh, if need be, uh, I, I'll, I'll wind it up at 10. Uh, we could even take it up some other time, convenient time that you all can think of. Uh, we will uh, go ahead and uh, have an extended session on fasting and prayer. The best thing about fasting and prayer is not to teach, but to fast. And so um, I wish we had... 
that's that's the main main thing about fasting and prayer let me hurry up this is a subject that's close to my heart and um, um, by god's grace I'm, i'm able to taste the benefits and the blessings of fasting and prayer for those who are making notes uh, this session is called the blessing of fasting and you can title it down and i'm just racing over the uh, slides to help us um with the material i hope you can see the white screen yes yeah send the wind send the rain any time you take a youth worship you have 100000 young people and all are screaming lord send the fire send the fire did you know that literally when the fire comes sometimes we run away <laughs> fire in the mountain and then we pray for the rain we pray for revival imagine we pray for revival i don't know how many of you for many years praying for the revival of the city revival of the nation and we get glimpses of revival watch the video and then when it comes to worship you talk about the move of god god is moving and a lot of youngsters and then we 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 collect and collage the manifestations of god somebody fell down somebody uttered a word of prophecy someone just got baptized and someone got healing and we talk about the acts of god and now you got to know the secrets of god the acts of god are visible to people but the secrets of god is, are for only those who fear him i'm quoting psalm 25 and paraphrased it there the secrets of the lord are, are with those who fear him and with them he makes known his covenant the covenant of god is not for public use you see that you need to come and enter into into a relationship an agreement with him to really get to know that and now we want the wind we want the rain we want the fire we want to see great things it does not come just because we sing it i've been singing for 25 years at the top of my lungs but just because i sing and shout and scream god is not obligated to do things because i scream because we have a singing ministry because we are into a youth ministry god is not obligated god is bound by his word no wonder out of all the faculty and facilities and and the mannerisms in which god is interacting with us he interacts with us with his word his word and he himself they are one god's boundary is his word yeah and someone is uh, wanting to preach through different means you're welcome yeah some sound yes um so if we don't know his word we will not know the manner in which he works in our lives god is working always just because he's working he will not work haphazardly and so if you want to know the secrets of the manner in which god interacts and works in our life we got to know the word not sermons not 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 many people you ultimately need to hit yourself with the word found yourself in the word and now we can have this crazy press and the winds and the rain i'm just going to quote get on to elijah and his prayer elijah prophesies and trying to say that there's going to be a sound of heavy rain i hear the sound i hear the sound of heavy rain how many times in prophetic worship you keep you keep declaring you keep you keep confessing you keep doing that is there anything wrong with that nothing wrong but get to know the principle get to know the principle for every practice there should be a principle no wonder before lord could take the people into the land of the promise he gave them the law the law precedes the land i hope somebody is getting something from that so uh, uh, elijah climbs but elijah climbed on top of mount carmel bent down the ground to the ground put his face between the knees this is the position for prayer and he kept on interceding seven times although he said there's a sound of heavy rain the rain did not come till he went on to the action of prayer something precedes the movement of the clouds god has put in his word a protocol that he will not act on the earth unless prayer precedes so no wonder for the command for a christian is pray at all times pray without ceasing keep on praying is a weapon in ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 putting on all the armor you want the armor of god to be in a functional mode on the green zone into battle keep praying at all times 
prayer makes the weapons, the armors effectual. Seven times he prayed, and after seven times, something gets moved. There's a sound, but if you from the sound, it, it needs to move to the cloud. You see, sound and cloud, a lot of technical terms, and we know this generation knows sound cloud. If you want the cloud to form and cloud to really gather the, the speed, the wind and the rain and the flood, the, 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 the equation will not come to pass unless it's preceded by prayer. That's when you get the wind and the rain. The wind and the rain had its formation on the knees of a man who was not willing to lift up his face that day. Meanwhile, the skies... Uh, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose and there was heavy rain. See that cloud, wind, rain. Cloud, wind, rain begin to form because a man was willing to pray. And now let me give a small purview before I get into the next passage. Unless there is prayer preceding these kind of manifestation, we will not really see them. They're only selfies, images, glimpses. We need to take from our archives, what God did in the past, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and simply play those videos. No. And so I'm challenging the 20 who have joined today. I pray that you will genuinely see the move of God in prayer. Not because we have done exuberant things with, with money power, with our finances, with our intellect. No, sorry. I pray that God will give you the grace to taste the value, the power, and the function of prayer in your own life. Let's not, let's not trumpet what God did when somebody else prayed. Let's, let's leave footprints in our generation that when we prayed, when we sought the Lord, when we cried, when we fasted, something happened in our generation. I'm challenging you. I mean, it's so easy for me to finish one hour with these lessons, but I'll tell you to gather together with you and knock the door of heaven. That is more a delight. That is more a burden. Catch the tempo prayer. Put on your mobile on a record mode and listen to the vocabulary of your prayer. Have you, have you graduated step by step in the school of prayer? Have you sweated in your soul? Have you given yourself wholly to the Lord? Have you cried cries that will reach the heaven? And God would say, I will not be silent because somebody on the earth is knocking unto me. Have you graduated? Have you been desperate? with it? That's, that's the place I'm talking about. Who cares about the eloquence of prayer if I have not prayed? Amen. Somebody's catching something good and type something on the chat box. Not for me. Type something valuable that others can note down. I'm a strong believer in writing down, making notes, rewriting. My professor says there's no good writing. There's always good rewriting. You need to keep writing, writing, writing over and over again. Learn, memorize. These things don't come to me just all of a sudden. I need to do my homework. Let me go down to next. I'm quoting another favorite verse of ours as Pentecostals and Evangelicals. The verse is from the book of Acts. Anybody? I mean, and, and from, from, from the book of, let me, let me, uh, already Prophet Joel is there. Let, can you go into the chat box and write the favorite verse of, from the book of Joel? And especially on revival. Type a favorite verse that is spoken almost everywhere when it comes to revival, Holy Spirit, awakening, Joel, and the book of Acts. Yeah, I've given a lot of clue. I'll wait for one or two to just uh, mention something on the chat box. Yeah, go ahead, please. In the last days. Wow. Divya Bullseye. Yeah, so I hope you know Bullseye. One day I was with my dear friend. I don't want to mention his name. I said Bullseye. Then he thought uh, Bullseye means uh, Yerba Mard in Kanne. So he translated like that. And then we had some laugh. Bullseye means spot on, yeah? Anyone, just because she wrote one verse, don't get in intimidated, yeah? Somebody tell me where that verse is without referring to Google. These days, we need to give extra asterisks. Anyone, go ahead. Tell me, where, where is this verse? Joel 2.28. Joel 2.28, yeah. 
Joel 2.28. I'm just going to go to that. But this is spoken of which, no, Acts chapter 2 verse 16. But this is that which is spoken by the Holy Spirit. I mean, by, by Prophet Joel. I read it again. This is that. Everybody say this is that. Whether you're muted, unmuted. This is that. Acts chapter 2. Pentecost is happening. 120 apostles on the upper, in the upper room. The wind comes. The fire comes. The fire lands on all the 120. They, they begin to erupt in tongues. A new chapter begins. The church is born. Peter comes out. Around people from 11 nationalities or 17 nationalities, they throng into that place. They hear the sound. And someone is trying to say they are drunkards. They are out of their minds speaking like this in the morning. But Peter, out of the 120, stands up and quotes this. This is that. Now watch this carefully. Peter, by the Holy Spirit, races back 700 years to what the prophet Joel said. Prophet Joel spoke 700 years ago about a move of God that would come. It took 700 years timeline and I want to narrate what will what really happened in that timeline of 700 years waiting period that a phenomenon called Pentecost took place in Acts chapter 2. Peter goes on and stands before the multitude and says, this what you're say, seeing, this what is happening, this in the day of Jerusalem is that. If you want this, you got to do that. Now, what is this is that? So he's trying to tell the people in Jerusalem, you see, you got confused. This is not yesterday's phenomenon. This is not what, 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 what breweries could do, what wine could do. This is not binging on a drink. This is a prophetic move that, that was prophesied and uttered 700 years ago. What is that? Let's go down. He quotes Joel chapter 2. I will pour out my spirit. Now go to the chat box and see, see the verse. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit. I'll come to that in a while. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh and look at the first thing, sons and daughters, old men, young men, servants, men and women. I will pour out my spirit. I will, I will cause revival. I will cause awakening. I will cause changing of heart. I'll cause a new chapter in church history. I'll cause a season that's going to be unprecedented. I'll cause a movement that will move out of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost part of the earth. But, my highlight is and afterwards. Tonight, let's meditate on this word and afterward. I will pour out my spirit is good. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit is good. Prophecy is good. Dreams is good. Visions is good. But all this will happen only and afterward. The precondition is and afterward. Now, my question is, and after what? Thank you, Lord. You're going to pour out your spirit. Young people are going to change. We're going to, we're going to have new songs, new revival, new this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But this is going to come after word. So let's explore these two, two words. Just one word. After what? After what is God causing this unprecedented move of God over a generation? Let's go to, we are in Joel chapter 2. The same word is picked up in Acts chapter 2, 17 and 18. Let's go to this verse there. Joel chapter 1 verse 13. I want you to carefully observe. I'm just uh, putting this in a crisp in, in, in three verses. Uh, probably a little more elaborate. What does Joel say? Put on sackcloth, O priests, and mourn. Wail you who, those who minister before the altar. Come spend the night in the sackcloth, you who minister before God. Look at the two times underlying minister. That means those in the ministry, those in the forefront, put on sackcloth, sackcloth, sackcloth. Today, we are running behind mantles. But let me introduce you to the word called sackcloth. It is not a favorite piece of cloth today. It is never mentioned in the fashion designing book in the world. 
but that which would move God and move this generation is someone who's willing to put on sackcloth. Whenever you have a sackcloth, you have this word fasting and then you have the word mourning. Fasting, sackcloth and mourning, all these three put together come because of a condition of the heart. Fasting and prayer goes beyond missing the meals legitimately fasting and prayer goes beyond trying to have a physical discipline it goes down to the breaking of the heart you see the breaking of the heart will form the clouds if someone can have a broken heart it is that which will cause the rain if you are able to bring down tears from your eyes genuinely out of brokenness is that when the clouds will have a shower of rain over our land. So first precondition, I'm going to go to three that very carefully. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly because something has gone amiss in the land. Declare a fast. Summon the elders, all who live in the land. Go to the house of the Lord. Cry aloud. Cry out to the Lord. You see, fasting is just not a, a, a holy discipline. It's just not four hours, eight hours, ten hours. The, the, the heart of the matter is much beyond the calendar date. Are you willing? Are you willing to go down to the brokenness? Does your heart break with things that break? The heart of God. Are you able to gauge things on the planet with the barometer of heaven? Are you calculating things on the earth with the lens of God? Then there will be brokenness. Oh, how I wish I, I go on to with this thought for a while. Let's go to the next, next, next verse. Joel chapter 2. Even now declares the Lord, return to me. There's a manner in which God wants us to return. One, I talked about sackcloth. If you want the mantle of Elijah, you want that double portion. First one who sought, the, the mantle just came, but, but Elijah sought the sackcloth. Or Elisha, should I say. Return to me with all your, how do you come back? Fasting and weeping and mourning. These are the three. These all three are just, just like a, like a triune chord, a three chord that goes along in your prayer. It, 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 it goes beyond fascinating vocabulary. It goes beyond thundering sound. It goes beyond all the vocal gymnastics. It, it goes to a place where words cannot be uttered and there is groaning in the spirit. Return to me in that manner, says the Lord. Rend your heart and not your garment. <clears throat> when you rend your heart, heaven rends with rain. Return to the Lord. Go down to the next verse. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Three times in the book. Three times in the book. Before you hit verse 27 and 28 and said, I will pour out my spirit. I'll pour out my spirit. There is a precondition after there has been fasting and prayer. I will pour out my spirit. So if a generation has not been schooled in the discipline of fasting and prayer, revival is only a mirage. We will have high sounding words on revival, 3D pictures, 4K videos on all the revival, but we will never see a genuine revival. We will only see imitations. It takes a generation to fast and to pray and to moan and to wear the sackcloth to see a genuine move of God. Are you ready for it? Do not be satisfied with 100 people, an acoustic guitar, a very good band, and everybody in the front jumping. I've seen that for 20 years. But I want a genuine move of God. It takes brokenness. Where are those who can weep before the altar? Not jump before the altar. Nothing wrong in jumping. I too have done that. But when it comes to prayer and fasting, why is it that we are reduced to two or three or five or ten? So be it, even if you have ten, gather them. Gather them. Blow the trumpet and gather the fasting. See, the trumpet 
trumpet is announces something to come trumpet either warns trumpet tells the season has changed when you have fasting and prayer it announces that things are changing in our church in my life in my city in my generation Oh, that God would give me the grace to raise up those who will stand in prayer. Yes, we've had a lot of people coming and filling up the concert halls and youth camps and taking all the pictures. But when it comes to fasting and prayer, it is about a room. Let me go down and deviate slightly to talk about prayer, what Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus talks about prayer and fasting, this is what he says. When you pray, I hope you have your Bible. I did not put it down in a slide. Somebody keep watching the time. When you pray, Matthew chapter 6, verses 5, do not be like the hypocrite. First thing Jesus said, friends, watch this out. When you pray, he did not say how to pray. First, Jesus taught us how not to pray. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites because the tendency of praying people is to gravitate to this word called hypocrites in Greek, hypocrites. Hypocrites means actors. Actors are those who have two lives. One is the stage life and one is the real life. Double-sided people, actors. All the posters of Rajnikanth, you don't have him having tea in his house with his gray head and, and, and probably an impoverished look. But most of the posters with the fans are Rajnikanth, who's somewhere in one movie, who, who's extra super, beyond human power, because they've got two lives. God bless them, no problem with them, God bless them. But when it comes to prayer, God says, Jesus said, do not act. Do not act. And he says that Pharisees, and those, these praying people are looking for places where they can stand. They're looking for places in the synagogue, that's the church, and looking for places in the street corners for publicity. When it comes to prayer, do not look for publicity. When it comes to revival, when it comes to fasting, when it comes to worship, Jesus said, beware of acting. And says, when you, come to, when you come to pray, this is what he said. Verse 6, when you pray, go to your room. My goodness. Room. Look at the size. Small place. Go to the room. Close the door. Forget about visibility of man. Catch the attention of the unseen God. You want to catch the attention of God? It's not putting on Facebook Live and being there for one hour so that people can, 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 can give you instant gratification with likes and comments and hearts. Are you willing to shut down to seek him? For this generation, that's what I'm challenging. Are you willing to throw WhatsApp for what's up? Are you willing to disconnect from the civilian affairs to be involved with things of the affairs of heaven? You need fasting and prayer. After this is done, look at this. Look, look, look at the trumpet call that goes where? 16 and 17. Gather the people, consecrate an assembly, call the elders, children, nursing mothers at the breast. No discount. Let the bridegroom leave his room, bride her chamber. If you are honeymoon period, there's no excuse for fasting and prayer. Let the priest who minister weep, weep. I'm asking our APC young people, when was the last time you went on your knees and wept? Wept for a nation, 
wept for the tribe, wept for the burden of the soul, wept over the, over the young, young people in the city of Bangalore. You were, you were broken beyond your human calculation and broken beyond your science and said something is happening that the Holy Spirit of God is putting on me. Let them say, spare my people. Before you can say, pour out the spirit on my people, spare my people into session. After this, what is the result? Three times, I, I quoted three different scriptures on fasting. After fasting and prayer, after, and then look at that. After that, be glad. And you have rain. He's faithful. Or he has given you the former rain faithfully. He will cause the rain to come down for you, former rain and the latter rain. Before the rain, before the move of God, is a season and a period of fasting. If we can embrace them, we have a lot of songs on rain, on embrace, on water. What about songs on fasting? What about songs on waiting? What about songs on weeping? You see, we are oversaturated with these songs. Thank God for them. Nothing wrong with them. But you've got to understand the biblical principle. And probably this is for me. It's a divine assignment. It's so divine that I can come and speak to you on this subject. Fasting and prayer does not require high sounding degrees and diplomas. It requires a broken heart. It could be a stammerer or a dumb or a deaf person, you want to catch the attention of God, brokenness is the key. Brokenness is prerequisite to build it. May God give us the grace to understand this. Depth. So let, this, is, this is just my little introduction to say, fasting and prayer is critical for an awakening in a generation. I know Pastor Roshan for, for over, over 15 years, I think. 2004, should I say, now close to four, 14, 10, and then around 7, 17 years. I don't know what is what the Lord has put in his heart, but if I have to speak to him and say, if he can lead 100 people in APC church toward fasting and prayer for a season, probably a year or two, his assignment is over. Before Nehemiah took 52 days to build the wall, but he fasted, mourned, and prayed for four months. Four into three, 120 days backed up with fasting, mourning, and weeping before God that resulted in quickening the building of the wall. And it finished in 52 days. Anna, the prophetess, who was widowed after seven years of marriage, or seven months, I think. Seven months, seven years. All along, she was fasting and praying at the temple of Jerusalem. Simeon was fasting and praying before Jerusalem, before the Son of Man could come. Let's not, let's not expect God to rewrite his own word and reduce the rules for us. If you want to see a genuine move, if you want to fabricate a move, get a jumping generation, dancing generation, go be it. We can have all of them. But if you want a genuine, unadulterated, purely of the Holy Ghost, move of God that will change the hearts and lives of this generation, we need those who can pay the price and be familiar in the room and school of fasting and prayer. This is introduction. After that, after all that, Joel 2.23, rain. After that, I will pour out my spirit. After that. After that, after that, after that, get to pray. Get to be broken. Make all the mistakes in English, but not the word of God. Who cares? On, on all high-sounding high words. Some of us are, are equipped with language. Some of us are not. I remember going to a youth camp. Or, or it was a leaders meet, I think. 
They called me, come and speak to the leaders meet. I made a presentation, finished it and called all the youngsters to come forward. We begin to pray one northeast tiny puny girl and she was broken. She came and suddenly I felt the Lord had a word and I gave her the mic. She said something in a stammering tongue. I know what she said. She, she just uttered a two or three lines. The whole meeting changed. Everybody were on their knees, confessing, repenting and turning to God. It's not about my high sounding words. It's somebody whom God can use and move. Now, let me tell you how the word of God works. Let me break it down the flow chart. When the word of God is released from a mouth of a pastor, a prophet, a teacher, the word of God goes around in the spirit to see who can host the word. You got to be the host of that word. And when you say, yes, Lord, when you say, God, do something in my life, when you come to him and no wonder in our, in our, in our little knowledge, we say commitment prayer altar call, come to the Lord, kneel down, lift your hands. These are simple ways we want to get back to God. These are avenues and so seize it. And when you host God's word, it is implanted in you. It takes root in you. You become pregnant. There is something that goes inside. The root takes place. You see, I'm using reproduction and, and agri agrarian uh, examples and motives in that. That's when you bring a harvest. There are many who can appreciate the word, cheerlead the word, clap the word, send the word. But it is those who host the word in submission are those who can bear the fruit. So if, if you don't accept the word, the word is looking for a host and a heart. God has got, 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 got 7 billion people and he's looking for somebody. He doesn't look for race, caste, color, tribe, creed. No, he's looking for somebody who says, yes, Lord, I'm available, Lord. And those are the ones who will serve him. It is the servants who got the opportunity to fill the water into the jar. The servants took it to the rulers. The servants took it to the boss. The servants took it to the higher up. It is servants whom the God, Lord is willing to work. And as much as the word is coming to you today, the reason why there is discipline of fasting and prayer, power of fasting and prayer, it is for you to host the word. May God give us the grace to do that. The blessing of fasting. What happens to a Christian when he or she fasts? Let me see how many I can, I can cover for, for tonight. Point number one, fasting develops humility. Fasting is a divine pathway to develop humility. Psalm 35, 13. Can somebody quickly cut and paste it from KJV? Because NIV sounds a little different. Psalm 35 and 13. I, yet when they were ill, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. Humbled myself with fasting. Watch this very carefully. Let me see if I can do some writing here. Okay, this is on the other side, so. Give me a minute as I shift the screen so it, it should help us a little here. Okay, you all can see my scribbling here. Um, Okay. Oh, 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 this is your one second. Yeah, this should help me. Yeah. Humbled, we have the word myself. 
my self when somebody others humble you it's called humiliation you got to humble yourself humble yourself it's not god humbling you it's called humiliation when somebody humbles you it's called humiliation you got to learn to humble yourself keep your ego under check not just check learn to go lower james chapter 4 verse 10 humble yourself under god's mighty hand humble yourself you got to learn to humble yourself and one of the ways to do that is fasting fasting develops develops humility jesus he humbled jesus humbled himself the bible says i mean we can go to each verse and spend time and just i'm hurrying up but philippians chapter 2 is classic emptying of himself who being in very nature god did not consider himself equality with god something to be taken for his own advantage rather he made himself nothing was eight he humbled himself you want to know how to bring that ego down that self down god has given us this as a pathway the tool the weapon is fasting in fasting this is that quality that slowly develops and you're willing to let go of things because you've let go of food you let go of things you're willing to let go of yourself let go of your desires your dreams your passion i should be you you, you won't be too forthright you won't be too assertive today the world is calling you your dreams you need to chase after your dreams who said that we give ourselves totally like mary beat unto me according to your word at 15 if i need to carry a child so be it if i have to be ostracized and parents are going to get angry lord i understand you got a will give me the heart and you come to that place of humility in fasting and prayer the problem with our heart is we are hardened by fallenness fasting gives you this heart you are so sensitive to the things fasting makes you sensitive heart of flesh you become sensitive to the move you become sensitive to people you become sensitive to words you become sensitive to what god's to say if if not this is this is our problem with ego we are we are hardened by that let me see if i've got something to to explain that there this is our our makeup i wish i do a long session on this but let me tell you what happens in 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 fasting i'll do some drawing here and then you'll understand excuse my my writing i'm just learning how to do that with this pen now this is the spirit this is the soul this is the body god took the earth <clears throat> breathed <clears throat> into his nostrils the breath of god which is ruha and god became and and man became a soul now you got to observe me very carefully now when you're born again your spirit is joined with the holy spirit of god your spirit is born again and then the communion becomes your soul is tied up to the body and you're still on the earth therefore your soul is slowly getting transformed there is no instant transformation romans chapter 12 verse 2 slowly you're being transformed in your mind so that you will start canceling the patterns of the, the the world because we are still in the world and so we need the mindset of Christ and so this un- undergoes transformation when you come to Jesus it's not your hair transformation 
It's not your uh, wealth transformation. It's not any other trans. Primarily, it's your soul, your mind, your thoughts, your will, your emotion. They undergo and align itself to the pattern of Christ. Now, one of the major problems with, 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 with soul is it is made up of the big thing called I. Now, listen to me carefully here again. The things of God will come into your spirit. You want to get out of addiction, let's say porn or lust or, 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 or some kind of substance abuse or, or even probably for your marriage. God has kept a person for you and, 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 and uh, God, is, God, God wants uh, directing you in a certain way. But this eye is a very big eye. Now, this eye comes in between what God is doing in your spirit and every time it comes to your soul, your mind, your mind becomes a big hindrance. You begin to question God. Did God really say that? Is it good for me? What about my status? You know, I'm very well educated. I think God cannot do that because it's not according to science or empirical formula. You have all this, 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 this thing, what the mind can do. And sometimes this I becomes a big hindrance. And this I can do something. This I can... I don't know why. can form our, our man-made idols here. Yeah. And this is the greatest hindrance for the Spirit of God to move. What does fasting do? Fasting brings this whole soul realm under the subjugation of the Spirit. It takes time. It's not a magic. So actually what happens is, Fasting starts breaking those I idols. The ego is broken in the realm of fasting. You become, technically you become physically weak. Spiritually, there is room for more of the Holy Ghost to flow from here, from here to here. This is exactly what fasting does as far as developing humility. Your eye is brought low. And the Spirit of God gets more access to minister to your mind, to your, to, your, to, your, to your emotions and to your thought realm. Let me tell you, what, what is the meaning of heart? We've heard God, God sees the heart, God sees the heart, God loves the heart. You need to worship from, but what is the heart? Heart is made up of M-A-T. Motives, attitudes, and thoughts. These are the three things that, that is made up of, uh, that makes up the heart. And so when, when the Spirit of God works in your heart, it means your motives change, your thoughts change, your attitudes change. There's something that's getting aligned to the way of God. And God can do that most swiftly when you start fasting and prayer, because the access to the soul is great. You got that? So that's what fasting, regular discipline of fasting, you're, you're more, more, more available, more vulnerable to the things of the spirit. And God is able to deal with you more, more swiftly. And this is the blessing of fasting. Let me hurry up. My goodness, time over. Huh? First point, brother, and 9.50 is the time. <laughs> Please oh, go ahead, Lord. no problem. <laughs> no, 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 I will, I will respect the time of everybody. Yes. Now look at another thing. See to it, brothers. Brothers, that means Christians, believers, born again, APC youth, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart. Now look at what, what we have. We have sinful, my good, what is that? My Pen, where are you? Yeah. Sinful, unbelieving heart. The tendency of human heart is to be sinful, unbelieving. This is for believers, by the way. It's not for those outside the camp. If we don't know how to take care of the heart, we will slowly drift to this stage. Sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Did you know? Even after coming to church, even after doing all the holy exercises, if you don't know how to take care of the heart, the heart is susceptible. 
to become this. And therefore, the antidote is encourage one another, what, daily? That's what we are doing today. As long as there is hope called today, encourage one another daily so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. The, the, the problem, the malady of the heart is that it can get hardened very easily. When it's hardened, the things of God bounce back. No matter how many preachings you listen, no matter how much worship you do, no matter whatever, whatever holy gymnastics we are doing, when there's a hardened heart, there's no result. It's like a parota that is two days old. It becomes like a rock and a rubber. It doesn't work. So this is, this is what we're trying to deal with. When you are in fasting and prayer, your heart is, is, is supple. It becomes, it becomes heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. And so that's, that's one of the blessings of fasting that we have. Let me see what's the next one. We, I'm just going to skip this. And I'm just going to, uh, if I may interrupt and okay. uh, ask if, yeah. are you free next Saturday, next week also to continue with this topic? <laughs> uh, is everybody, would everybody be okay with that? But uh, Anna, you tell me if, if you're free. <laughs> I'm kind of booking you right now. <laughs> so okay. we can. Next. Um, 27th. Saturday. Okay. Uh, I'll, the same time, nine o'clock, ba? Yes, sir. Right, nine o'clock. Okay, I shall, I shall make myself available. Okay, because I, I mean, I, I might, I might not be there, but then uh, I think one of us will host you. But uh, I think we should just kind of go with this flow that we are in. Okay, ninety uh, percent. Okay, I'll just look into it one more time and then confirm to you. Uh, sure, sure. Yes, yeah. Ab absolutely, no problem. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Now, uh, before I go to the second point, uh, I have six more minutes. I'll just, uh, I'll just go through this. Um, two words, because there's heavy. There's this slide, and then open it up for questions or something, if anyone has any thoughts, any comments, anything to add. Now, the signs of humility are three things. One is you become sin sensitive. You, you're quick to repent. You know, what kind of heart does God like? The heart that God likes after so many years uh, you know, serving the Lord, being a believer, say around 25 years in my life, what I've discovered is, uh, where is that? Yeah. God likes a contrite heart. Broken and a contrite heart. So when you say I'm developing humility, but what are the signs of humility? Point number one, whenever you sin, you are a miss. You displease God. You're quick to repent. You look at the entire Bible. Whenever people are coming back to God, this is how they come. Repentance is the condition of the heart. It's just not weakness. It's just not somebody, somebody, somebody's weeping. It's just not a thundering message from an old Pentecostal school. Repent, repent. No, it's the condition of the heart that God has seen and it manifests in repentance. Now, let me ask you a question. How quick you are to pull the nail or a thorn from your, from your foot when it pricks you? How quick you are? Millisecond, microsecond, one second? So you know that some external object is harming your body, your leg, your feet, your hand, and you're so quick and your reflexes are so quick to act, then you want to remove that nail or a thorn because you know it's so hazardous. Let me translate that into practical terms in sin. How quick you are to remove sin from your life. You lied, you erred, you uttered a bad word, it just popped up, it just came out. But how quick you are to repent after all that King David was in Psalm 51 when he messed up with Bathsheba, he came up with the song, he receives Nathan's rebuke and he takes this pen and pens down this song in Psalm 51, I think verse 17, broken and a contrite heart, God, I know you will not despise. 
burnt offering, fascinating offering, wealth offering, and all my musical skills. I know you can just, you just can just push it and brush it aside. But one thing I've learned, oh Lord, that's what David says. When I come with brokenness and a contrite heart, I know you're not despise. Fasting brings you to that place when God is willing to expose you to who you are. God is willing to, to zero in on his microscope or telescope. You come under the lens of God and God shows you your error. That's what happens to me most of the time when I'm fasting. I get to know the rubbishness. I get to know how, how deeply sinful I am. God deals with my self-righteousness. That's what happens in fasting and prayer. And you develop that. You develop brokenness. You're swift to get back to God. Signs of humility. Whenever you say, I don't want to be me, you want, you're, in, in, in practically you're trying to say, Lord, I want to be like you. If, you. if you're trying to say, Lord, I be like you, to be like you, to be like you, that means you need to cease to be like me. Be like Sonny. Then only you can be like the Savior. You cannot have two images. That's acting. That's double acting. The, the, the last stop of Christian life is Romans 8.29 to be conformed to the image of his son Jesus Christ. After, after you're doing all that you want to do in Christian life, is any act, doctrine, teaching, book, sermon, message, video, if anything that you're doing is not propelling you to align to the image of Jesus Christ, remove that from your life. If you're listening to me, but I'm not following Jesus and walking in the light like that he did, do not follow me. Do not listen to me. Christ-likeness is our highest goal. And fasting is a pathway for us so that God can start working because our hardness is broken. And we need that more. 9.59. God bless you all. I don't know what to do now. I'll ask Pastor Roshan to say something. Do we have a little time or? <laughs> yes, or, or, go or, ahead. Or, yeah. or, 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 or we have a few minutes. Any comments? Any Anyone want to say anything? Uh, any questions? I'll just open it up right now and then probably we'll sing a song and then we'll wind it up. Anyone, go ahead. I think we can go for another 10, 15 minutes. Huh? If, yes. I mean, if you're okay. Um. Because if, uh, if you, yes, hi, hi. Yeah. sorry. Uh... Uh, hi, brother. Um, yes, I'm yes. Joshua. Joshua, yes, Joshua. Yes. So uh, I know that we need to continually renew our mind and yes, yes. word of God will definitely help us do the same. Sure. But I, I have a small question. Yes. Uh, if we want to completely change our pattern of thinking and have um, to align ourselves completely with God's thoughts throughout what are the practical steps do you think that we can actually uh, try doing? Thank you for the question. <clears throat> Completely is a process. Completely, it doesn't happen overnight. And no one, whenever, it's, whenever it, is, it is the word of God, it says daily. Pray every day. Give us this day our daily bread. Take up the cross daily. I beat my body. I die daily. So rather than trying to make Christian life, look at the next 40 years, how to be. No, we need to learn to walk in his ways daily. So when your daily life, you're championed your daily life, then you can know the next week I'm going to be like this. God has never made our Christian life like a sine wave. Sometimes you're up and down, up and down. No. So let's concentrate on how to win the war daily. Secondly, Christian life is a war, as I just mentioned. So if at all you say, I want to align, I want to do this, we need to identify our enemy. Our enemies are categorized into three categories, the world, the devil, and the flesh. So we must learn how to resist that. Thirdly, since we belong to this earth, we are patterned of, of, of the worldly culture. It's called the idiosyncrasies. It's the mannerisms and pattern. And therefore, when Jesus came, the first thing they uttered was kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of God has come. So kingdom has its, its own territory. 
its own laws, its own words. So what, what we are trying to do in Christian life is we are praying that kingdom will come into us. We pattern our living from that kingdom. Therefore, we need to learn the dynamics of the kingdom of God. That's why we have, and that's what Paul writes to all the letters. This is how you need to live. And so we are not only having a battle with those three, three, three categories that I said, we are running after the things of the kingdom. And things of the kingdom operate by the Holy Spirit of God and the word of God. It's a combination of two. Combination of two. The spirit of God will not work with you if you're not willing. He will just move away. That's as simple as that. So we need to uh, imbibe. So all these three aspects that I said comes under discipleship. And so I think uh, Pastor Roshan might be, might be dwelling on that. So if you can get those three dynamics on a daily basis. Now, we heard that word again from Hebrews chapter 3. Encourage one another daily. So there are some things that we got to do on a daily basis in not to win the war consistently in a Christian life. Old school pastors will say, did you read your Bible? Did you pray? We are fed up of that question. But in essence, what they are trying to tell is, if you can win the battle with prayer and Bible reading, keep those two things to a close, you're able to pass the day. You're able to enjoy the day. The Spirit of God interacts with you. Something happens to you. You carry that tomorrow. So there's a cumulative growth, and you're able to see a significant change in your life. Praise the Lord. Okay, brother. Oh yeah, we can talk a lot. Yeah, we can. Make, this is this is a fascinating topic, and we need that. Anyone else? Any questions? Any comments? No one. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you all. Um, why don't we sing a song and then and then then close? Roshan, any comments? No, no, please go ahead. Create in me a clean heart. We have that song from uh, 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 Psalm 51. If you know the words, can you just put it on the chat box, please? We'll... Um... Cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And renew a right spirit within me. Lift your hands and say, cast me not. Away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Rest, O oh Lord, the joy of thy salvation. And renew a right spirit within me. Renew a right spirit within me. Father, this is our prayer that you'll raise up this generation who know the value of brokenness, 
who are willing to wear the sackcloth, who know how to mourn for the things that have gone amiss, who can stand in the gap. Give us that burden, O oh God. Give us, give us grace to break our egos. Give us grace to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Lord, take us to the mysteries and dimensions we have never, never entered. Break religiosity. Break the patterns that have skewed us up. Open our eyes to the things that we are ignorant. Break the hardness of my heart, our heart. Give us that brokenness in a spirit that is contrite to take upon the sin, our family sin, my sin, the sin of this nation and come and say, oh God, spare us. Spare this generation. Pour out your Holy Ghost for a genuine and adulterated manifestation of your Holy Ghost. We are fed up of imitations. We fed up of all the magic shows. We fed up of what the flesh has done. Oh God, raise up a generation who are baptized in the liquid fire of the Holy Ghost, who will groan in the spirit and pray the will of the Father. We give ourselves to you, have your way, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord over to Pastor Roshan. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I can't believe time is up. I don't know what to say. <laughs> but can we just uh, uh, give a big God bless you to Saniana, please. Um, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm actually thinking what to say, what else to say. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I so wish we could meet in person. We would have this session in person. Uh, but yeah. Um, such a blessing thank you for being such a, uh, such a blessing to all of us and uh, well, hopefully we can have another session on, on the same topic uh, in the f next week or the following week I'll be in touch with you um, uh, everybody else thank you so much for hanging on uh, um, I hope you've been blessed by the series so far and uh, you know like one of the things that I shared last week and uh, when we finish the session on intercession is that I don't want us to be known as young people who are just cool but that we would actually pray the prayers that are in the heart of God um, and uh, um, yeah that's the intention and the heart behind the series and I hope there's something that you could take away uh, and uh, and I will upload today's session on YouTube and, uh, and share the link with you all so you can hear it and hear it over and over again uh, and so, yeah, that's about it for tonight. Uh, thank you all once again for your patience and for joining in. Uh, good night. God bless you all. Sanyana, thank you once again. Welcome, Roshan. Welcome.